This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is my full review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, yeah, duh, the third generation of their foldable phone that turns into a tablet. Now, I did a first look video a couple of weeks ago, and now I've had two weeks to test this and also test it with the S Pen, which we did finally get a hold of pretty quickly, actually, after we got the phone for that first look. We're going to look at it now. So folding phones are the thing of the future, right? I know some of you might be doubters and just prefer traditional candy bar phones, but you got to admit, there's something really cool about this and for a third try obviously things are getting a little more mainstream the price however has only gotten slightly more mainstream not mainstream at all sorry folks while the galaxy z flip 3 that we reviewed is getting mainstreamish pricing at 999 this one is still 1800 dollars. it is 200 dollars less than the previous versions were but it's still early adopter territory what a nice laptop you could get for that price right well there it is anyway the phone in its third generation adds a couple of things. It's not as big a design, physical change leap as it was from the original Fold to the Fold 2, which gained a significantly larger outer display that used up pretty much all the space on the outside instead of having a big chin, got a more pleasant interior screen protection system going on. Well, this time what we get is a design that looks mostly like the Fold 2. If you just saw them on the table, other than color differences from generation to generation, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. But what we get here is IPX8 water resistance, which is a wonderful thing. So you go out in the rain and you don't have to be terrified that your $1,800 phone is going to croak on you, right? Also, again, germ awareness is on everybody's mind these days so now you can really give the phone a good cleaning which was something that a year ago i was a little worried about with the folds and the flips because you know you couldn't really clean them and putting them in uv sanitizers well this one's a little too big obviously when it's open isn't necessarily a good idea because plastics can yellow in uv sanitizers all right and we have of course the s pen which is as ever good old wacom emr which is top notch for digitizers. For those of you who are artists out there, you know that's what a Wacom Cintiq Pro uses, for example. And the only difference here is they change the frequency from your standard S Pen slash Wacom EMR pen. Usually they're all interchangeable because this one has a spring-loaded tip to make sure you don't really jab too hard against the screen. And they change the frequency just to make sure you wouldn't be tempted to use one of the existing non-springy tip models. That said, the springy tip on this is really pretty stiff. You gotta push on it hard to get it to start retracting. So I, I thought it was gonna be a lot more, you know, soft than givey. You, you don't even feel it when you're writing with it. Let's put it that way. You don't have to worry about that. And also, I, the tip is pretty much just as fine and precision as on a normal Wacom EMR pen. I was worried they might make it very broad, so you're not really pinpointing pressure on the screen. So, hey, good that. I'll talk a little bit more about the pen later. Samsung is using a new OLED display technology for the inner display, so it gets to be 29% brighter while not using any more power, in fact, using a little bit less. So the inner display previously on the Fold 2, I would never say I had a problem with it, but I'll never say no to brightness, especially because it helps mitigate some of the glare from the screen protector that's permanently or semi-permanently applied to the top. Speaking of that, they say the screen is 80% tougher, and that largely applies to the PET, your kind of plastic screen protector that's on the top. So no more fingernail marks and gouges, that sort of thing you have from normal use. I haven't certainly in two weeks managed it, and I actually do have some fingernails to accidentally make marks with. And it feels more like glass. And in fact, the S Pen, the only thing I didn't like about it is the way it skates around on the screen, which it feels just like glass. We all know what that's like. But anyway, a bit more durability there. It's still ultra thin glass. Uh, we'll see how it holds up when it comes to things like some of them cracked in the crease area. And yes, there is still a visible crease. So if you're team OCD and you are really bothered seeing that, it's there. For me, it disappears as I use it. I don't even really think about it. You can feel a little bit with your finger. And speaking of that S Pen, again, I, it's two separate digitizers for the Wacom EMR la layer put really close together. So in the crease, there is actually no digitizer. So they use software to basically interpolate where your line's going to go if you cross across the middle. And let me tell you, it does an excellent job. It, I couldn't tell if I didn't know that that was happening, that that was actually happening. So there are no issues with that.
So while we have that big 7.6 inch OLED inner display, the outside is still 6.2 inches, which takes up most of the front area. It's tall and narrow, form factor there, but I find it pretty usable to be honest. But that one now is 120 hertz refresh rate, just like the inner display. So for those who are bothered by the less than silky fast kind of scrolling thing and all of that, well, you've got on the outer display now too, which is a typical glass screen and of course durable. And that's the idea with the phone. You close it up like a chunky sandwich there and you've got something that protects the inner display and feels somewhat like a normal candy bar phone, albeit a bit thicker. It is a heavy phone, it's 271 grams, but if you're using a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is also a very heavy phone, I can't say they feel much different in terms of weight. The outside of the phone is covered in Gorilla Glass Victus, their latest and greatest strong glass. And the frame is armor aluminum, which is supposed to be stronger than even 7000 series aluminum, which is pretty tough stuff. And it's lighter than, well, duh, stainless steel. So it helps the phone not be as heavy as it might be. For the internals here, we have 5G, all low, mid, and millimeter wave bands. It's available unlocked and on every major US carrier. And all markets get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor, which I know some of you are thrilled at because in Europe and some other areas you get the Samsung Exynos CPU, which hasn't been pulling as strong as the Snapdragon CPU. So good that. It has 12 gigs of RAM, same as the last model, which is more than most phones. And for this price tag, I should hope so. And you can get it with 256 or 512 gigs of storage. Obviously, the 1799 price is for the 256 gig level of storage model. And there is no micro SD card slot on board. So if you need more storage, you got to pay for more storage. The cameras really are unchanged in terms of hardware from the previous generation Fold 2, which is to say basically Samsung, Samsung S20 level cameras. We have triple cameras. We have 12 megapixel cameras all around, but you get your ultra wide, your main, and your telephoto. It's a pretty mild telephoto, like 2X, you know, uh, but it's better than nothing. By the way, the Z Flip gets the same cameras, but it lacks the telephoto lens. So same camera quality other than that. Of course, there are software improvements that Samsung has made since the S20 came out and they've added some S21-ish features, like you've got director's mode and stuff like that. I, it's good full featured software. Honestly, you've, you've got their, all the bells and whistles that they offer there. Their multi-shot take, their director's cut thing, their you know, panorama, slow motion, you name it. Honestly, they're quite good cameras. As I said with the Z Flip 3 review, nobody ever said, man, my S20 cameras sucked, did they, right? They're pretty good cameras. They're typical Samsung, a little on the vivid side, a little on the sharpening side, but overall, it takes very competent pictures. And unless you're a real photography maven who should be buying something like the S21 Plus or an iPhone 12 Pro Max, you'll probably be happy enough with the cameras. Thank goodness you can use the outer cameras for selfie cameras because the inside one, as you no doubt have heard by now, is an under display camera, which is a relatively new technology. So that means no more hole punch on the screen, which is kind of nice because honestly, when watching full screen videos and stuff like that and seeing that little dot there, it was distracting. But the under display camera, which is like four megapixels, takes pretty mediocre shots that look washed out. I mean, yeah, you probably don't want to use it so much unless you're desperate. And also, it's not as effective as you might think when speaking about the under display in the sun. That is, you can see it. When the screen is showing mostly black, I can still actually see it. When it's showing white, you see this itsy little spot of a kind of like a barn door grid of dots. So it's an early technology. I know Samsung's trying to throw all the nifty things they can in a very expensive high-end phone, and that's why it's there. But better luck next year with that one. Phone is running Android 11 with One UI 3.1, and Samsung's user interface and software has been quite good for some time. They do still have some redundant applications, so you have to choose between Google's or theirs, but whatever. It works fine. The phone has facial recognition login, but if you're going to use it for something like Samsung Pay, because it's not the super fancy face ID level secure stuff, you're going to have to use the fingerprint scanner, which is embedded in the power button. It actually works really well. Some of their earlier Folds, honestly, the, that never really worked well for me. This is just spot on. It's good. This, there's no under display fingerprint scanner, but I think that's okay. This thing works 
great. And it's been a good place to actually reach it. Oddly, Samsung still makes you register your fingerprint with the phone closed and not open. So for a lot of people who keep it open a lot, that might seem a little bit weird, but I found it still worked when the phone was open anyway. The fingerprint scanner read my fingerprint just fine. You do have Samsung Pay here. You could use Google Pay if you want, which is just fine. We have NFC for those mobile payments. No magnetic stripe technology anymore. Bye. It also supports DeX and display out over USB-C and of course wireless display casting as well. When it comes to the S Pen on here, like I said, I like it. It's as good as Wacom EMR ever gets. It's, if you had a note, you'd be happy with this. It works just as well. It's just that slipperiness that kind of I don't know, maybe it's because it's a bigger surface area that I notice it more than where if you're using it, say, on a Note 20 Ultra or something like that, you know, that's, you can hold it and be a little more precise. Here it's like, woo! So if you're an artist, don't have to get used to that. You'll wish you could put a matte screen protector on top of it just to make it a little bit more grippy. If you're a note taker, you probably won't care at all. You can do some pretty good art with this. I, I wish Procreate was available, honestly, and maybe even full Adobe Photoshop someday for it, but there are enough decent art applications out there for Android at this point that if that is what floats your boat, you can really go to town. So there's been some brouhaha about the battery. It's 4,400 milliamp, which ain't bad, folks, but it's a little bit smaller than the previous generation. But optimizations for the more power efficient display, the Snapdragon 888, running in low power mode a little bit more efficiently, are supposed to make that okay. And truth is, after about the first four or five days when I was using it, testing it heavily, taking videos all the time, using it for Google Maps and all that sort of thing, and it was doing its optimizations, now it gets about the same battery life as my Z Fold 2. And yes, I own a Z Fold 2, so I can say what it's like to live with that battery as well. So it's actually quite good. It's a lot like the S21 Ultra. This is a battery you don't really worry about. I mean, I suppose if you played Pokemon Go for a marathon session, I don't know, something like crazy where you use a GPS and we're gaming at the same time, you could, but I have absolutely no power problem getting through the day on a ch full charge with this. I start the day at 7 a.m. and by 11 at night, it still has about 35%. And that's with moderate use. Again, not GPSing my way to goodness knows where for hours, but playing some games, taking a lot of photos, shooting some videos, social media, streaming YouTube, you know, all the stuff that we do with our phones. Battery life is solid on this. It might take it a couple of days for it to get there for you, but give it that couple of days. When it comes to charging, there is no charger in the box because, well, guess what? High-end phones don't get chargers anymore, do they? It supports 25-watt wired charging, should you have a 25-watt wired charger available, which you just might if you're upgrading from a previous-gen model or something like that. And you can wirelessly charge it as well, and that's 10 watts of wireless charging, and it supports reverse wireless power share. So you can charge buds or a watch or something like that using the phone itself, which is pretty cool when you're on the road and you don't want to bring a little charger for everything. Right. That's the idea with that one. When it comes to the software, Samsung has done a pretty good job here. They've changed the DPI settings so more truculent programs that really wanted to run as if they were on a regular phone on your inner screen, meaning like, hello, Instagram, you know, blown up huge and stories getting cut off and all that sort of thing. More programs run in a more tablet-y way, making better use of the screen real estate. And Samsung's multitasking is done really well. I mean, it's actually not painful and unintuitive. So you can have something running on the screen, say you've got YouTube and you want to drag over a browser, you just throw it over there. You want a third program, you can actually do that and drag it down there. And then there are little resize handles so you can adjust the sizing. So. So as a, a productivity kind of machine, which is the idea here, you're spending this much money and you've got something that is, relatively speaking, about the size screen of an iPad Mini 5, right? You can get a lot done here. So it's quite handy. Say you're, you're going out on a sales call somewhere. You, you need to have Google Maps open and you need to have your email open at the same time to see what the heck it is you're going to be doing next. And then, you know, your Word document or your PowerPoint on there for your next presentation, boning up on that before you go and do your presentation. Or if you're more casual kind of person, say you're playing a game and you want to have a YouTube walkthrough video running and then you've got your Discord going and then maybe some Twitch, you get the idea. Any number of things you can do on the screen and it's big enough that, granted, when you start dropping things down to quarter size, some of them get a little small, but it's still overall really pretty usable. The phones available in your choice of black are really nice looking silver and green and these are called phantom green and phantom black. I guess phantom is Samsung's word for matte glass, which is a good thing. Less slippery. Yay.
The good news for cases for the Fold 3 and the Flip 3 is this year they fit much tighter. They were kind of a joke, loosey-goosey coming off, needed adhesive and all that sort of thing. Uh, Samsung sent us the leather case, not the leather case that holds the pen, which is kind of big and has a flap that I know annoys some people. So you figure out if you're the kind of person that wants to flap over your screen. But the one we got is just the regular leather case. It protects the back and then the front it wraps around the, well, around the display in the front. It stays on really well. There are, is some adhesive you can pull back so you can use it. It's reusable, you know, it's not permanent, not going to mess up your phone, but it does the job without adding, out adding too much bulk and weight, but there'll be a variety of cases available to you. And for the S Pen, there's two sizes, the smaller one that we have and one that does double duty and can work with regular S Pens devices like the Galaxy Tab S7 and with the phone or with just the phone, the smaller one that we have. So there you have it. That is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 for 2021. And as ever, it's a crazy lot of money, but I know that's something you're going to buy. And Samsung's pre-orders apparently were the strongest so far for this iteration of the device. It's pretty mature. I have to say the software is quite good for multitasking and it makes better use of the screen real estate for other applications, for settings, menus, all that sort of thing. The cameras are good enough. They're not any better than last year, which is a disappointment. The screen's supposed to be tougher. We can only hope it is. I can't promise you that. I don't know. But Samsung seems to have faith in it since they're doing things like throwing in Samsung Care Plus free for the first year. And of course, your warranty covers anything that breaks because of design flaws. The, the Care Plus is only if you do a whoopsie and accidentally step on your phone or something like that. You get the idea. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.